Picture Needles podcast. Yay! Episode 54. Yes, it is. Here we are. Getting up there. We're filming at night again. It's a Tuesday night, mm -hmm. March 7th, right? Something like that. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just decided that we wanted to film during the week because we're wild and crazy. Sundays are lazy days and mm -hmm. we had a dinner date and didn't yeah. film. It was more important that it we was. had chicken and wine. Pork chops. Yeah. It was delish. Had it for lunch yesterday too. Amazing. So, um, this is a crafty podcast. Um, usually mostly knitting, a little bit of crochet here and there. I have a crochet project all year this year. Oh my well, God. I don't, not all year, but I do have a crochet project. Yeah, we're crazy. So, um, we're branching out in life and we're two best friends. We live in central Arkansas. Is that our intro? That's our intro. Hi. You want more information about us? We're not sisters. Ask us. We're not. We're just friends. <laughs> I've been asked that multiple times now. No, yeah. we're not sisters. I don't have any. I mean, I have sister in laws, but mm -hmm. I don't have any sisters. And I only have sisters, but they're not her. I have a lot of brothers. <laughs> we're soul sisters. It's true. Best friends. I'm wearing our merch. Um, this is one of our. We have a spreadsheet shop. It'll be linked below. This is one of our. Something's massively wrong with us. T-shirts. I love this logo. I do. Um, too. It's really, really cute. I love we have it. this one, and then like a rainbow with the words on top of it. And um, this is a hate comment we got uh, because we're <laughs> pro-choice. Somebody said, "I knew there was something massively wrong with you guys." So yeah. if that's not the vibe for you, we made it merch yeah. to make it really clear. <laughs> Probably just go away because you're not gonna like this. We also again. made like high friends, which is what I say at the beginning of every episode, and whip it out mm -hmm. as little logos, and those are adorable. And almost all of my brothers have bought High Friends sweatshirts and t-shirts, and it just makes my heart happy. It. It's really cute. We love it. I need to get a family photo of all of us that have it. Adorable. We love it. Yeah. I forgot how to podcast. How so do we I? This? We always just, I mean, usually we talk business up front. Um, and then, yeah. Party at the end. Party at the end. I mean, that's how we like it. Um, yep. We're the mullet podcast. Anyway. Um, but we don't have any business, so we could just jump into FOs. Yeah. Not wearing any knitting, so. Not wearing any knitting either. <clears throat> yeah, finish some stuff. You want me to start? Go for it. Cool. Um, I have three things that I finished. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I just already see it. I like it. Oh, so these well, are my ugly those. socks. Yeah, I don't like these. <laughs> I think they're hideous. I know I tricked you. You said it's cute. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> these are my March Desert Vista Dye Work socks. Uh, the color is like K9 Caper or something Ooh. like that. Um, they, I did 60 stitches. I did about 20 rows of two by two rib. And magic I did, heel. It's a magic heel sock, the pattern by Autumn Acorn. I did 45 rows on the leg, 50 on the heel, 50 on the foot. A rounded toe. They don't match. I hate them. I think they're really ugly, but I already have someone in mind to gift them to. So <laughs> that's what I love about sock yarn is everybody's taste is different and someone in my life is going to love these. So now that I've shown them to you, I'm going to get them out of my sight. I think somebody called those the dragon fruit socks and that's exactly what they remind me of too. <clears throat> Dragon all fruit. those colors it's this is the it's inside the, of the dragon fruit the pink and this and then, are yeah. dragon fruit yeah the rest of this is just ugly mm. yeah so. that's not my favorite either but <laughs> isn't that like mardi gras those colors what are mardi gras colors yellow and purple and golden purple and they're mardi gras and Red? dragon fruit they're ugly oh, no. <laughs> they're done though and they were my february socks for the desert vista dye works um knit along i need a pair of socks with desert vista dye works here every month and then at the end of the year, you have free skinny yarn. Um, two other things. One, just like a little random thing. I should have done my snaps different. I knit a little case for my Kindle, for my e-reader. Um, I put a little snap in the middle. I should have done two snaps on the side. I just made this up. I put notes in Ravelry. Um, and I have the newest Kindle Paperwhite. I think it's an 11. So um, if you want one, you can follow my numbers and stuff. But it's sock yarn. This is Night Owl Fibers in Jess's Wedding Day colorway. And I just did like I cord cast on and stuff. Added a little snap with my little snap tool I got at Hobby Lobby a while back. And I love it. It's all ribbed, so it's nice and stretchy. I just made this because I um, carry my Kindle with me all the time in my bag because I never want to be somewhere without a book. <laughs> so. This will keep it from getting scratched up in my bag because my mom seemed horrified that I didn't have a case on my Kindle last time she saw it. <laughs> and you're like, you're right. And she said, oh, I'll make you're you right. one. And I was like, yeah, but then she hasn't yet. So I made one. Um, 
I don't even remember what I did. I know I cast on with an eye cast off on here and did a little flap. <laughs> My hairs were built in. <laughs> Knit down and then I kitchened the bottom. So that's like the basics, but. It looks great. I love it. It's cute. It's a good vibe. It's going to be on my bag. And then the FO I'm the happiest about. I finished my Vertices Unite that I Yay! had just started last time. So <clears throat> this is a Stephen West pattern. I did the large version. It's a hodgepodge of yarn. <laughs> All these yarns are skeins that like never would have been used. <laughs> okay. Love it. Um, so this was section Ugh. one and the green was one of the Sock Yarn Society colorways, and the blue here was a Yarnable colorway. Um, I believe maybe this was section two. My white is a soft blank from Arkansas Yarn Co., and the purple is Lola Did It from her Bridgerton subscription thing. Most of these are one of a kind. So far, all these are one of a kind. And then this one's repeatable. I don't remember what it's Wild called. Wildstar Fibers, and it's either Pollux or Leviathan. Leviathan. Yeah, Leviathan. There That's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are the yarns. These are all just like ones that would have sat in my stash forever. One thing I did different, I followed the pattern almost entirely, except at the end, the pattern called for you to pick up all the way around the entire shawl and knit a row and then eye cord bind off. I followed um, the Crazy Sock Lady has a tutor tutorial on YouTube for an applied I-cord border. I linked it in my project page. I followed that. So there were like three sections where I had live stitches that at the end of the section, Stephen told you to just put your stitches on, um, on hold, I put them on barber cord. On those sections I bound off and on the others I just like picked up and applied the border as I went. I explained it on my project page. That saved me so much time. But like the whole shawl took, all the main knitting took 10 days and then the eye cord border took six days. And that's dumb, <laughs> but it's done. All my hands are woven in, I'm excited to block it. She had about this much left at my house. It was like this much and she was like, I'm gonna frog it. <laughs> I hated the eye cord, hated it. But it's perfect, um, it's, it's done pretty. Now. It's done, it used up five skeins from my stash. I cast this on because I was really tempted by the fragmentation shawl that Stephen Wash just put out, but I couldn't put together seven skeins for my stash, but I did put together these five and I had already purchased this pattern. So I loved it. It was a really fun knit. I could see myself knitting it again. Um, I think I'll give this one away as a gift to someone. It needs to be blocked still. Mm -hmm. It ends up like when I put it on, it is wearable. Like I could see myself wearing it, but also I have a lot of shawls. And I think somebody else might get more joy out of this, out of these colors than I do. But it's cute. It is. And it was a fun knit. Highly recommend the pattern. Yeah. And it's your second attempt at it. And this one just went better. The first time I got like, this is section one and I probably got like right there. Mm -hmm. Like I did nothing. Cause I just wasn't into it. Um, but I needed something pretty mindless. And this one, each section after like four or five rows, I had it down memorized. So that was nice. Nice. And it's done. That's everything I knit. I have three FOs as well. Yay. Um, and I will start with the smallest and then go to the bigger ones. Okay. So first one is my February gnome. This is so cute. Mm -hmm. This is Norbert from Never Not Gnoming by Imagine Landscapes. Ooh, I did it without pausing and saying dragons. Imagine dragons. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my only thing about these gnomes is that they always end up so small. I want them to be bigger. So I think I'm gonna just knit one that's bigger. Same pattern, I like this one. I like this specific pattern. It's very you plain. I held your yarn double and just went and, up to like uh, a three. Yeah, you get that's bigger. another one too I was thinking of. Um, I'm using scraps. These are from my um, 2021 advent with Wooly Mama. And then this is just a sparkly mini from um, Arkansas Yarn Co. And stuffed it with polyfill, filled it with beads. It sits in my mom's kitchen. She loves it. She loves Storm the gnome. Cool. So I want to make one that's like, what do you call it? I want to say 4th of July. That's not correct. You know what I'm talking about? St. Patrick's Day. There. <laughs> <laughs> because um one of the yarnable boxes yeah. came with stuff for a gnome and a pattern and so yeah. I made that one it's at my office I have shelf. that yarn I just don't I only have <laughs> I have three gnomes one of mine came out huge yeah well one of mine did come out huge too it was a patterned gnome um it was the one with the tulips on the side of the hat 
It's like little cables. It's a plain one. I, I don't but, even, I'm gonna look and see which one it was cute. because I thought we had both knit, but mine came out gigantic. Yeah. Uh, the one with the cable crossing things all over it. Mine came out big too of that one that I did. But uh, all the other ones I've done are small. So mine, the Gnome de Plume is the one that came out huge. It's the one with like, it has cables on it. Yes. Oh. And that thingy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, mine came out huge too. Hmm. Okay. My There's the second. Came out. I'm going to show a picture. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? He's real cute. I love that guy. Okay, my second FO are these socks. These are from Zebra Yarns. I don't think the colorway is named and I don't see it in her shop, so I'm not sure you can get it. But you might want to message her and ask because people have asked about this colorway. Um, and this is a mini from the same sock set. I did, it's vanilla. I did 64 stitches, cuff down, two by two rib at the top, and then I just slipped every eighth stitch and then staggered the slip stitches in every stripe for the first two rows. And then I did a shadow wrap heel this time because I wanted it to be all four stripes in the heel. And it just ended up being really easy and, and nice and didn't distort my stripes in the foot. So that's, that was the goal. And I love them. They are a little big, honestly. Mm. It's not, okay, so I don't love a shadow wrap heel on my foot. It's not actually as deep as I thought it would be, but it's really wide. So it just is kind of like weird and loose right there. Um, but I still love them. I think they're really fun. They're very bright and I have not washed them yet. And I think that that's going to help them fit a little bit better. But what you doing? Messaging Anna about what color that is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are you taking pictures of my side boob? <laughs> oh, she's going to get a fun surprise. But yeah, so um, I really like these socks and they're, I, I love a stripy sock so much. Um, and these are old sock blockers. People ask about these every time we show them, our wooden sock blockers. These are from Knitting Left. She does not make these same kind anymore, but she is still making blockers. Um, and, and we love them. They're very high They're quality. Very yes. Uh, so there's that. And my last FO is a big one. It's in my Wooly Mama Yarns Advent bag because... You're really gonna freak out. <laughs> it does happen to be my Wooly Mommy Yarns Advent <laughs> from 2022. Oh. This is my whatever sweater. She is finished. Oh my gosh. Yes. So this is <sighs> oh my gosh. amazing, right? Okay, so oh your sleeves even oh, match. They match really well. So it, ah, the whatever so the whatever sweater is like a recipe. It's not a full pattern, but I liked that so much. I literally only followed it for the yoke and then did what I wanted for the body. Love it. Because I already know what I want. Yeah. And of course I'm pregnant right now, so it's not looking like I expected it to when I started it. Mm -hmm. But um it is still really good. It fits. I just it's not what I like want my Ooh. So is it smell good? It smells Someone good. else told me that too, and I haven't washed it yet. I think it's probably just it from just like lotion like house. handling it, like fabric. It's, yeah, it smells right? like your house. Um, but yeah, so this took all 24 skeins of the advent with no scraps. I no. literally only had ends. And then I added four additional right here, this green, yellow, orange, and pink, um, because it was already kind of rainbow fading. So I was like, green, yellow, orange, pink. Love it. Beautiful. That's and, really um, good. You make good choices. I had those four in my collection from when I had her uh, mini skein um, subscriptions. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's 28 mini skeins and about 41 grams of the contrast color, which is a gray cast iron skillet yeah. by Arkansas Yarn Co. Okay, less than half double. a skein. Okay. Yeah, less than half a skein for the, the total of that. Love that. Yeah, because um, I wanted it to be DK. So I held everything double and I marled it and I did a lot of weighing. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it turned out so good. It turned out better than I thought it would be. Um, as far as like the colors going together, I didn't know because I literally did it day by day. So these are all in the order of the advent all the way until you get to this last green. Um, that's how Those they came. Extras, yeah. And then I, yeah, I love it love. so much. Um, I, the <laughs> sleeves are a little bit big. I didn't decrease enough because mm -hmm. I didn't have numbers for okay. what would fit. So I kind of just like wrapped the sleeve around my arm and was like, okay, I think, I think I could like lose, yeah. I think it was 30 stitches I could lose in my arm. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll just decrease by 30. So I went to the knitting calculator, the worldwide knitting calculator, and I just um, said, oh, I have 83 stitches and I need to have 51. 
or no, I think it was 52 because I needed it to be two by two ribs. Yeah, exactly. And so then I decreased it down based on that uh, math, which was cool. And they're still a little loose. You probably could have cut it like knit two together all the way around and like cut it in It half. was knit two together almost all the way around. There were five stitches. I should have done two rows of decreases based on that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, it was, it was, I literally went down 32 stitches, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Um, the, I think I should have gone down to 40. I should have, I should have done basically 40 stitches because that is what I do for my, um, flaxes. Yeah. When they're going to fit an adult, um, is 40 stitches. And if so. If you wanted and, to go back, you could, yeah. you have the yarn and. Yeah. Could just pull the cuff back and do that. Absolutely. Again. I'm not going to. Yeah. Because I like how it looks. It's cute. It's like bell sleeved and it's cute. Um. It feels really good so on the good. belly. Your fabric, it's so <laughs> squishy. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. I picked a size eight needle holding very thin fingering weight double. Mm -hmm. Um, because the woolly mommy yarn is very thin and like Your not very really spun. But um, I loved the gauge of it being a little looser. It feels so heavy to me, like as a garment, it feels so heavy. When I put it on my body, it feels so thick. That's how I feel about my Gardner <laughs> Myler. Like it just feels hefty in a yeah, good way. Dense, but like, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm gonna wash it and block it. I'm really excited. I don't think I'll be wearing it this year. It's already like 70 degrees in Arkansas. Yeah. So we'll it'll be second fall. winter soon though. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be cold for yeah. Easter. I'm just really excited that it's done finally. I can check it off. And I used so much yarn without scraps, and that is so oh, satisfying. It was definitely it was like twenty one hundred yards. Yeah. Something like that. No, it might have been more than that. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, it was it was huge a huge amount of yardage though. Cause yeah. I love, love it. it. Love it. I love, love it, it so much. I'm very excited about it. I um recommend doing it that way. I did not take good notes. Um I never do. And what you can't else? blame me for that. Do your own math. <laughs> so there. Yeah. Take that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but that's my last FO. Love it. We have whips. We have whips. Yeah, I want to whip them out. Whip them out. Whip them out. Yeah, I have lots actually. Uh, all the people who bought Whip It Out merch, you guys are hilarious. I love it. I Do love you that you're walk wearing around with a shirt that says Whip It Out? I Someone swear. Someone tied us today and I was like, girl. I love it. <laughs> Makes me so happy. It's fun, for sure. Really hilarious. <clears throat> I've got some stuff. I'll show you guys some stuff. Um, I'm going to start with my non socks. I have two non sock projects. One is a baby vertebrae sweater for Kristen's baby. Yay! I haven't touched it in ages, but for no reason. It's time. Gotta get that thing done. I will eventually. <laughs> um, I don't remember even what I'm doing. Oh, it's wait. fingering weight. I have another way I felt, but I forgot. It's okay. You're good. What is it? You keep going. It's actually not that finished. <laughs> okay. Um, baby vertebrae. One of my favorite baby patterns. I'm through the yoke onto the plain knitting part. I remember why I put this down because I took the needles out to do something else. Mm -hmm. But I sat down and picked it back up and put it in this adorable bag I got from Barley Pearls. Love this. I don't, do we ever show these? No, these are new. Come, oh my yeah. gosh. What's that show? Um, we'll talk more in acquisitions. My little handle's off because it's on my keys. <laughs> I'm bring it in here. Um, but I've posted about these guys. Anyway, baby water brace water. I'll finish that soon for the baby that's growing over there. Mm hmm. And then my other non-sock project, oh my god, I lost my wallet and like a week ago <laughs> and it was in this project bag. That's so <laughs> ridiculous. This is my outline tee. Um, for the Arkansas Yarn Crawl this year, the garment, uh, Lori always coordinates, Lori of Arkansas Yarn Co. For the Arkansas Yarn Crawl, coordinates like a matching sweater for anybody who wants to participate. And this year we picked the outline tee. I've already knit one. I love it. I wore it this morning. But... I wanted to make one out of fingering weight because the first one I did, I used Bamboo Pop, which is like a DK. So this is Sinful Yarns in the colorway Blue Obsidian. I love this. Got the Starkins Yarn Co. Um, whatever she has of Sinful Yarns left in store is on sale. So check out her clearance section. Um, it was like a good, good sale too. I don't remember exactly, but love this yarn. So... I don't remember any other details. You're doing it bottom up because that's what the pattern says. Yeah, I hate that. Jessie May, why are all your patterns bottom up? It's ridiculous. <laughs> and I think the pattern called for one by one. I did two by two rib, uh -huh. but I'm just on the vanilla part now. You do like set up and then you just knit and knit forever. So have that ready for 
I'm going Grouchy out of town mini. tomorrow. Yeah. So hopefully some, I have some socks to finish, but I'm gonna throw that in my suitcase, maybe on the way home. Um, what you got? My semi-FO, not FO is crochet. <laughs> Um, this is called, I want to say it's called the Rose Baby cute. hat. I haven't sewn this together or weaved in the ends. So really cute. it is for my friend is, um, <clears throat> at work is pregnant as well. And she's due about a month after me, but her baby shower is tomorrow during work. Love and um, she's just having a diaper shower, but I figured I'd make her a little thing too. So it's oh, this cute little lovely. hat. I'm using, um, I want to say this is Patton. No, it's Karen yarn. And I think it's called Party Sparkle because if you can see it's sparkle, it's it just is. acrylic. Um, I am going to wash it and kind of condition it because it's acrylic so it doesn't feel great. And it's crochet and there's shell stitches. Throw that so. in while you soak your sweater though and it right? will soften up. I'm going to put some like baby conditioner in it too because it makes it so soft. Have you ever done that with acrylic? No, I haven't knit with acrylic in a long oh, time. Oh yeah. If I, if, when I was knitting with, or when I was crocheting a lot more, I definitely got, had some tips and tricks from locking stuff for babies because you want it to be so soft you know mm -hmm. it's going on baby's head so um yeah you put like baby conditioner into it mm -hmm. and you just like let that soak and then you just give it a cold rinse and then you like it's not really blocking it because it's acrylic but yeah. you lay it out to dry and then it smells good it's safe for the baby and it's so much softer good to know. so so soft so it's a free pattern i'll link it below everything will be linked below but um, I just haven't weaved in the ends and put in the flower. So cute. it's basically done, and I, you won't see it next week. <laughs> Very Because it's going to her tomorrow. Woohoo! Done with that. Um, other <clears throat> whips. Other whips. Other whips. What's she got? Other whips. I got a lot of socks over here. Think about it. I don't have any socks. <sighs> I do, I just don't have uh, them with me because I'm not really working on them. Okay, so I started another um, thing for my baby. Hmm. I've only knit one thing. And so this is my second thing which is the Pickles Romper. I don't remember who it's by, I'll put it below. Um, and it is supposed to be done in cotton sport. Um, but I decided to do it in Malabrigo scraps that I had. This was from my uh, shawlography shawl. It's Malabrigo sock in fuchsia. And if you can see the details up here, I've got buttonholes up here, this is the front. And I did modify the pattern because I refused to knit anything in pieces and seam it. So this is a pay for pattern. I won't describe the whole pattern entirely, but it is seamed. And I said, I could do that not seamed. And it is like knitting both pieces back in front. And most of it is stockinette, which means that would be a lot of purling. Oof. So as soon as I could, I joined it in the round and just knit it in a circle. <laughs> And now I'm on the legs, so it's on barber cords on one side and needles on the other. I've got like one row of cuff left down here and I can bind off and then I have like five rows of leg over here and then six rows of cuff and then bind off and straps and that's it. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so tiny. So because I did it in fingering but I'm using the same needle size, it is going to be smaller than the gauge of the pattern, but I'm good with that because it's a one to three month pattern for this size that I did. Um, but this will fit her like when she comes out, boop, boop. you know, mm -hmm. it looks like nothing right now. I can't wait till it actually takes shape. I do yeah. have to knit a pocket too. It comes with like this, a, it's called a kangaroo pocket. So it opens on both sides Cute. and it's basically takes the same shape as like the body, which there's like a seam down the middle That's fun. and it, uh, yeah, it flares out. I think it's gonna be really cute. So mm -hmm, it will be. I want to make more of these. This one was not as bad to knit as the Monday suit was. Good to know. Not as fiddly, and it's so cute. I could put it over like a onesie, mm -hmm. and if it's hot, then not over a onesie. Mm -hmm. Boobies out. Poor baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is that, and then I have a uh, muscle bird mm -hmm. in the same bag because Love I was that. lazy. <laughs> um, this is my February muscle bird. It's the color. Stormwatch by um, Hypnotic. It was one of her yarnable colors. And I've gotten through the increases in like maybe a couple inches. I'm doing the adult medium size. I chose the adult medium size <laughs> on, uh, I think all of my hats I choose the adult medium, even though I have a large head and I would probably like the fit of a large better because the yardage you actually need for an adult large with my gauge is more than one skein of yarn. So I'm just like, whatever, I'll wear a tight hat. I mean, you can just make the inside. I don't want like when to. when you run out. 
Fair enough. Because I just feel like unless I have a scrap that's kind of close or like, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that's fine. But for the most part, I just want it to be a one skein project and be done with it. That's and right. I don't want to like think about measuring every time. I want to know that when I get to about 10 grams, it's time to decrease and be done. Yeah. So. Um, when I do the larges, I knit until the yarn is gone and then I start my decreases in another color. Hmm. And that, that fits makes perfectly for the big heads in my family. Big head. And then you still don't have to measure. But Tasty. it's not a one skein project. So that's annoying. Yeah. I do. I love a one skein project. I don't want to have scraps. So if I'm using a scrap, then I'm fine with it. Like to like. That's what I mean. Yeah. Scraps. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, <clears throat> it's never scraps. Fair enough. I do have other projects, but I didn't bring them. So do you want to show your socks? Sock things. parade? Yeah, I actually only had like two pairs. I thought I had more, three pairs. Um, these are my Leo and Roxy socks. I showed these last time as a hoe. This is the first one. These are a fully ribbed sock. They're 60 stitches on a US one, 2.25 millimeter. I think I did a 70 row leg on these bad boys. The second one, I thought I was done with the gusset. I'm not, it's taking forever. And I just haven't wanted to pick this up. Um, but there's a second sock. Hoping to finish this on my trip. It's high on the list because I just want it <coughs> off the needles and on my foot. Why is it spicy? I know I have like <coughs> I gotta stop drinking that diet coke. Mine is a uh, cherry limeade and she's spicy. She made my eyes water. That's some strong sprite in there. Uh. Um, this other one I haven't shown in a little while because I haven't picked it up. They're the toe up brioche socks that I'm doing. They're stunning. They're really pretty with a sock set from Harbor Fibers. It was from her advent a couple of years ago. The gray is Michael's iPod and the blue is Pam's tea kettle or teapot. Um, I love this pattern. I've knit one before and I wear those socks all the time. And so I wanted another pair. The reason I have kind of stalled on these is because now they're too small for my nine inch cirques because the brioche is so stretchy, you decrease down drastically on the leg. Um, on the foot, it fits fairly normally because half of it is still vanilla, but the leg is fully brioche, so you do a lot of decreasing. And I just need to switch it to Magic Loop, but I just haven't done that. I feel like switch it to Magic Loop, do the cuff, and be done. That's a perfect size sock. Um, I want it a little <laughs> taller because it's so stretchy that it shrinks down mm. when it's stretched out a little bit. And it's boot so, boot <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I love the ones I already have, so I'm making them exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Except I did go down a size. Like I think on my first pair I did a medium. This is the small because they're very stretchy. So which would be why this is too small for the nine inch. I'm just realizing. I love it. I also have a little French press stitch marker on there from um, Ever Twin Mountain, Twin Mountain something. Who is it? I buy her stitch markers all the time and I love them. Oh no. I'm thinking Evergreen or Twin Mountain. One of those two. I'll find a link. They're amazing. Um, they're really affordable and really cute. And they're like, she has like an engraver thingy and does like plastic ones, like resin and wood. And then last one, I started my March Desert Vista Dye Work socks. Um, I believe this colorway is called Haley's Comet, um, which unfortunate to knit with a Haley yarn in this climate. We're pro Selena over here, but <laughs> I took you a minute. <laughs> Hallie, you too. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm thinking Hallie in my head. Yeah, I love it. It's only a two color stripe, which I love, but I've just started this. And this is again, one of my main ones for my trip. Um, 60 stitches, two by two cuff. I don't know if I'm gonna do magic heel or a heel flap. It'll kind of depend on what Those I'm doing. Those are for you, you do a heel flap. These are for my aunt. Oh. I'm gonna, I want them done on the trip so I can get oh. them to her. Um, I was like, look at that color. I think those are for you. But yeah, really you're right. yeah, but they're gonna be for my aunt. Um, and the first pair I've knit for her was Magic Heel, and mm -hmm. she loves them. So I can't decide if I want to just like stick with what she knows or treat her to a hillflap and gusset. And I think that will entirely depend on where I am when it's time for the heel tomorrow. Treat her to a hillflap and it's, gusset. Treat her. It's objectively better. Yeah. Just it's. I treat love the Magic Heel sock. Like if you guys are looking for. A beginner sock, an easy sock, a an gift easy, sock. Yeah, a giftable sock. I have knit so many pairs of the Magic Heel socks, and I'll never stop knitting them. I mm -hmm. love them. Autumn Acorn, love her. Incredible. And she's so sweet. I message with her fairly often. But I also love Heel Fucking Gossip, so. What's your favorite? It is. Yeah. It's what I, what I know. That's all my, most of my whips. 
I have several others. Look at my notebook with all my whips. Love it. I did not bring my Frank shawl because I haven't knit on it because I was putting it on a barber cords and I dropped like six stitches. Mood. Uh, so that might be frogged. <laughs> Okay, me. Just kidding. Um, my shifty sweater, which will not be worked on because I just can't. And then <laughs> my fall favorite sweater. I have a giant crochet blanket, my cozy memories blanket, string apart socks that I don't even know where they are, and my muscle burger I already showed you. So love it. Yeah. I have to take a quick break because I have to pee. <gasps> right now. I have to pee right now. Right I've now? been holding it. I'm Mid sorry. episode. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're back. <laughs> and we're gonna do acquisitions now. We have stuff. We have things. Things we do. Stuff, we do. Stuff and things. Um, let's do our barley pearls bags. Okay, those match. So, Chris of barley pearls is the sweetest thing ever. So Chris sweet. and Krista. Um, here's mm -hmm. our card. We love barley pearls. Barley they are pearls. local to us, even though I've never met them. <laughs> ever? I don't think so. They've popped into. Well, Chris has popped into Knit Night before, but it may have been one you missed. I always miss them. Um, she <laughs> just shows up at my office and brings me bags, and it's incredible. I love our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> She's your bag dealer. <laughs> she is. And Barley Pills bags are so good. Yes, they're so, really so good. They're really cute. She saw Kristen's pregnancy announcement. I know. And made us bags. Mine says mommy. My little handle on it says auntie, but it's on my keys because I love it so much. I want it all the time. <laughs> Um, I love it. These are the best. I think this is her medium size and she said she was just looking for a gender neutral baby print and she nailed it. It's so cute. Very, very sweet of her. So this is what I'll put all my baby knits in from now on. I love it. This is a Lego my nephew gave me. It's like a Lego keychain thing he got of a Pokeball. We love it. Love that. <laughs> um, other acquisition? Um, we have this stuff from Queenie Believe, Queenie B. And then we have a present. This is amazing. Okay. So. Always Queenie Believe. There it is. Always Queenie Believe. So sweet. Reached out to me. Let us know she made these bags specifically for us with us in mind and wanted to send them to us. So I don't remember all the details. This is amazing. So I do know that. Okay. So if you can hear and see. This is uh, a very sturdy bag. It's like it's, it's vegan, vegan leather. leather and vegan suede. And it has a rainbow zipper, which is so Kristen. Mm -hmm. Mine is Mickey Mouse themed. It has Mickey Mouse. And if you can see the little Mickey Mouse all over, it's so cute. And they do have names. Yours is like the perfect project, project, perfect. I brought. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> good. That's all the information then. Yes. Sweet. Um, we do have a coupon code for these bags. And yes. we will link the store below. They're, these are truly just amazing. My bag is small. Which you see Maddie's. It's gigantic. <laughs> Our coupon code is share me. All one word, share me. Um, no end date, twenty percent off. That's incredible. Yes. Um, her name is Guinevere. So sweet. This is my bag. It's got both like, of our heads can fit in there. Be on it. Yeah, adorable. It's so cute. Hold on, let's move that back. Ugh. So it's got. It's so tall, so deep. It has a handle on the side. Big old B. There are pockets inside. So she told us mine is the Always Queen B project bag in the deluxe queen size for larger projects that need a little extra room. So much detail. All this detail is on her Etsy. So we're going to link that, of course. And Kristen's is the Always Project Perfect bag. I love this bag. <laughs> love it. Carefully curated for the pampering of your creative, endeav creative endeavors. It is so a big sweet. bag. I do. I have my, all my needles in it right now, yarn, and the other present we got from her. Yeah. Okay. This is the one. These are the Always Bits and Bobs accessory caddies. These are made with vegan leather, cotton canvas, quilted designer canvas, vegan suede, all the things. And they match our bags, which is really, really cool. And our vibes. Yes. And so sweet. look at what is inside. It's crazy. So two pockets on the outside. I have all my sock needles. I have all my nine inch on one side and all my toe needles on the other. You can look um, at the inside of these. Big pockets and a needle inside threader inside thing. It. Yeah. So it comes with tons of notions. It came with a needle threader, a tape measure, stitch markers, like light bulb stitch markers, tapestry needles, um, safety pins, scissors, a highlighter, maybe even some more stuff. It came with so much stuff. It's got like a ruler for the edge band here yes. and then like an actual like tape measure inside all of these stitch markers. This is so cute. I've thrown more stuff into needles. mine. I have my barber cords, some yarn cozies, chapstick, this all kinds of stuff. This is how they come. I think yeah. the price tag was like 60 I believe it was like $65 and you get 20% yeah. off that. 
but it comes with so many accessories and y'all this is it this is like a mesh so you can clip stitch markers onto it it's amazing so cool 10 out of 10 would recommend i the bag is beautiful and the bag is huge it fits so much stuff but this if you're looking to make just one purchase to support a local business this is so well made her fabrics are so cute mine has like the ruler backing all over the inside too and this is i love it it's I, just so cool i've sent her like I sent her messages back to back when I got it in the mail. I was like, this is incredible. I think the coolest thing is how the scissors snap in. So you've got this little snap and then it goes through the scissors. So your scissors won't fall out and you can pull and them out. They're so, cute. It's so They're so cute. They're such cute little scissors. And it's got so, like a little felt at the top. And we the, love it. This is are, so this cool. This is very cool. It was a yeah. surprise. I did not know what to expect because it was just kind of a surprise package in the mail. And I did not expect this to have so many cool compartments this is and so things. Cool. And this is so helpful. It's been in my bag since we got Mine's it. Mine's been in my purse. <laughs> I've been carrying it around so I can use it for every single project. And I love it. I didn't even Big open fan. up the front pockets. I'm so stupid. That's funny. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, you know? I immediately <laughs> was like, this is always in my bag now. Sock needles are always with me. Love it. Um, let me see crazy. if I forgot anything else. Follow her on Instagram. Like seriously give her some follows because like she's she has so many bags it's so cool yeah check yeah. out her stuff for we'll sure it below i think it's, that's all yeah instagram is queenie believe queenie with an ie i'll put it in the yeah in the box thank you so much that is so sweet and generous and we love it i'm so excited about i mean that. it's just insane very very cool yeah um do you have any other things that you've gotten because I have a present for you. No, I don't have any. I mean, I have things I've gotten that are non-knitting related, but they're not They're not for this podcast. Our friend, um, Jewel, Jewel's Knits, uh, or Jewel's Knit, something like that, sent Kristen a baby present. It's Jules, and it's I Rihanna. haven't opened it. Is this Jewel's? Yeah, it's Jewel's. Or it's Jewel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. this is for Kristen for the baby. We were literally just talking today. We talk about Pokemon. This was so funny. Jules is also pregnant. She's announced, so I can say that. Is there, is there, God, there's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, there's a little oh part that's to fall. Okay, so I'll take things out. You know I'm a mess. Oh, they okay. have little tags. <laughs> so sweet. Okay. okay. This is so Go cute. It. it says, hello, friend. And I think that this is handmade. Oh. A note from the artist. Quilling is an eight. Quilling is an ancient art. Hailing as far back as medieval times. Even the simplest design can take hours to create. I hope you enjoy this small piece of art. The pieces are inspired by the people, places, and history where I was born. Jennifer Greenstone. This is um, an Instagram creator. Lady Moonstone Creations. That's so sweet. Okay, hold on. I don't want to break this because this is so cute. <laughs> Look at this card. It's That's so pretty. Is it blurry or was that my eyes? I don't think it's blurry. It looks so blurry. It might be your eyes. I'm losing my sight. That's so cool. So that's quilling. That's cute. Hmm. That makes me so happy. I'm not going to cry because I have makeup on. I'm not going to do it, but I want to. Because memories are everything. Okay. This is so sweet. Mm hmm Heidi's baby's print. It's like a hand and foot print kit. That's so cool. You see it? Okay, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm like actually freaking out about this pregnancy thing, you guys. Like, it's pretty crazy. I'm putting your stuff back in your back box. Oh my gosh, this is so oh, cute. The little, oh, sweet. Is this like a month? It's the whole month. It's okay, so it's all the months and it's like the little For like. pictures. Yeah, that is so cute. I don't even think about this kind of stuff. I, you guys are never gonna see this baby because I'm just gonna be like. Yeah. Like, in my own world. This is just so crazy. Because every mama needs an outlet and self-care sometimes. This is so this sweet. This is so sweet. Jewel, what the heck? <laughs> I've talked to her today and had no clue that this was happening. Yeah, I've been coordinating things <sighs> in the background. DM me if you want to get in on Aww. it. This is so sweet. Crinkles. Yes. Oh, sweet. It's a journal and it's also a devotional. That's sweet. I love that. That is so cool. Eh. And it's pretty. I'm going to give you this first. Put because you can never book. have too many of these. What is that? You're going to find out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's so cute. Aww. A little headband, a little onesies. Oh 
my goodness. This is so cute. Ooh, hold that up. I hold this up. Headband. Oh my goodness. It's crazy. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start crying. The last one's gonna get you. Oh, saved no. it for last. We can take a pause this after. This is so cute. Oh my goodness. I don't, you know I don't even have like I have like onesies that my sister got me. Um Yeah. In the very beginning when I told them not to get me anything yet because I was very nervous and that's all I have right now so this is crazy okay this one Ugh. because every little girl needs something so she can twin with mama oh my goodness now what is that <laughs> okay i'm literally even gonna cry i know it's a little love note and this is what i, I i'm this is my favorite sweater and yeah. now she can literally be my little twin that's so cute i know oh my god no we're not crying i am uh, we're not crying right now oh my god and it's so pretty and i love it so much that is so cute this is like the best acquisition ever um this is jewel that's like so i'm gonna message her in just a second though i'm gonna take deep breaths breath. Don't cry. <laughs> You're not allowed to cry. I cry at everything. Oh no, I'm going to cry. This is so I cried cute. when I opened the box and I hadn't even unwrapped any of the tissue. Ugh. I just knew that was in there. This is so precious. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like I saw her knitting this too. She posted it on Instagram. Ugh. She said, one of my friends is having a baby. And I was like, oh, Kristen, has so you liked much. it? And I, I was like, she has no idea. <laughs> no clue. And I was like, dude, everyone's pregnant. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, yeah, oh my gosh, she's going to be like, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> we're literally, we just bonded over Pokemon because I showed my evolutions bag last time. Yeah. And she's like, do you play Pokemon Go? And I was like, I used to, but I haven't in a while. And she's like, well, if you ever sign back on, like, friend me. And I was like, well, I'm signing on now and I'm friending you. And then I haven't stopped playing it since. Literally, <laughs> that's who I've been playing Pokemon yeah. with. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh my I God. So much. And she's like kicking now. She's like, yeah, put it on me. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that's so sweet uh, okay uh, thank you thank you for keeping that secret that was really good uh, this is so precious yeah and now I don't have to make one yeah because so <laughs> that is the whole thing I do not want to make another one for a baby I want to make one for me oh my mm -hmm. gosh you get similar colors and make one that looks like this for oh my me gosh. this is so cute I know okay I put everything back in the okay. box here thank so. you that was crazy. That was our last acquisition. I'm in tears. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. So on my personal channel, I mentioned that I might want a like community project Daisy blanket for the baby. Um, she will be born in April. So um, daisies are the flower for April. I didn't know that. I've just really been leaning towards daisies like for since I knew. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna have a daisy nursery. I'm do all this daisy shit and um and then my mom's like oh yeah that's the April flower and I was like oh cool then it's meaningful you just felt it in your bones <laughs> I just like like daisies so I was like I think that's cute and it's just like very simple and um mm -hmm. so I found a pattern for a daisy granny square and I will link it down below and if you're interested I found the parameters I'm going for so. Yay. I do not care about colors. I want it to be kind of crazy, but I do want it to have two colors, one for the daisy part and one for the background part. It is crochet, granny squares style. Um, but basically fingering weight yarn held double, super wash or has to be machine washable. Machine washable. Because it is for a baby and it will have poop on it. Yeah. What hook size? Oh. Mine is fingering held double mm. and I'm using an eye. Oh, wow. That feels right. That feels nice. I'm a slightly tight crocheter, so you could kind of like set the baseline and then yeah. say like if you're super loose, maybe go down one, but, or you could set a measurement. If you wanted to crochet one and then put it on the, or I can Ooh. crochet one and put it on the screen and say if you could make it this size. Then if somebody's like a little off, they could just do an extra row, like a single crochet row or something to make Good, it fit. I could do that. Well, you don't want to have to make yeah. every single one match. Like if That's you just gave, if you said eight inches or whatever it is, less than that, seven and six inches. I don't inches. know. I don't know how big that the normal square is when you do it. So I'd have to check. Yeah. So um, I, I think 
This is because it's a pattern, so I don't know what the yet. pattern is. I think it would be smart for one of us to crochet one and then say using this hook, but try and get it to this size, mm -hmm. and then let people add it's an extra row if they need to. Idea. So I'll put that. If I do it before I edit this video, I'll put it here. I can crochet and one. And if I tonight. don't, <laughs> then I will put it on Instagram. So I'll let you know right there where to look for this information. Um, but I think it would be really cool. So if you wanted to contribute, it would be really awesome. And you can make as many squares as you want. I'm, I want it to be a big blanket, not like mm -hmm. a crib blanket. I want it to be something that she can have as she grows. Yeah. So um, it's not something that's going to go away. It's going to be something that I have for a mm -hmm. long time so yeah lots of squares i think it's gonna be really cute yeah cool we'll yeah. have more details on the screen or below or something yeah cool cool okay that's all <laughs> yeah i think that's probably all the knitting we're gonna move on to life stuff <laughs> um when we talk uh, about books i have my book squares so i'll show you guys oh yeah book squares but that's the last of the crafty stuff so that's where we're at uh, in the oh no no wait, oh wait, wait, wait i do pause have, i do have my uh planned uh, cast on. Oh, yeah. Because I do always have to come with yarn so that I can cake it up at Maddie's. Ooh. I got this from someone? Maybe someone sent this to me? It's been a long time, so I don't remember. I don't remember buying I it. Love those colors. It's by Knitterly Things. It's the Vesper Classic Sock. I really feel like somebody sent this to us. Um, I know that tag. It is Where's a self striping tag? Knitterly Things. No, the. I know this price tag. This is from a Your shop. Infinity and Beyond? No, that's the no, color. This the format of it. I don't mm. know. But I don't remember buying this, but I, I have had it in my like self-striping sock pile for a long time, and I'm like, I'm going to knit it. That's looks really, really cool. That is cool. I don't know who I'm going to knit it for, but I think I'm going to knit a... <coughs> um, Excuse me. I think I either want to do the... What's it called? Crazy Sock Lady pattern that I like. Uh, Hilto Desido? Yes, that or the other one that I like, that's, that you like. Mahogany, Mahogany Run. Mahogany Run. Yes. So, I'm going to cake that up today. That's going to be my new cast on. Cute. That is my last ivory content. Um, I'm planning to make a little bunny. One of my friends asked me to make a bunny for her granddaughter that's about to be born. So, she brought me yarn today, and it's down there. It's just hoblob. Um... My brother's calling me. Nick, we're podcasting. Nick. Nick. Give us a minute. Tom, hey, you're on the pod. Um, Maddie's given instructions to give this bunny, to knit this bunny, and because she's not a yarn person, bought her two different sizes of yarn. I saw her pictures. <laughs> um, oh my, it's right here. I'll just show y'all. Um, I posted a Ooh. picture of... I think the hippo I knit for my niece, and um, my friend messaged it's me. So pretty. Her um, daughter-in-law is pregnant, about to have a baby, very soon. Gonna pop any minute now. And asked if I had commissioned a bunny, and she paid for the supplies. Very sweet. But um, I sent her pictures of what I needed. Like I went on the website and like picked out a couple of yarns. And then she called me today and was like, hey, can I get this baby bee yarn instead? And in my head, I was like, yeah, baby bee, sweet delight, perfect. Because I didn't realize they had a chunky. So I told her yes, because I had originally said cotton. Um, so it's my bad. So the main, I think it'll be fine. The main body is going to be in the pink. And this is for some accents. And this is DK, where these are chunky. So I'm just going to hold this double. And I think it'll be close enough. But the pattern's written for DK. So I have to math it. And it's going to be a little bigger. Hopefully not going to use much more yarn. I can go grab another, I guess. But I try not to spend my money at Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. But um, what are you going to do? I think this it'll be funny. Anyway, so it's going to be really cute. A really adorable little bunny. And I think I could get away with only using this for, like, accents on the face so the gauge wouldn't matter. But um, I'm going to try and finish this very soon. So y'all will see it. This is very soft. It's so soft. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Bad company. Yeah. I'm using a pattern out of a book, a Susan B. Anderson book that I have. So I'll link it in the project page, but it's not what you can get on Ravelry. That's really cute. So you can most of Susan B. Anderson's stuff, she has a website and she links a lot of her patterns there, even when they're in books and yeah. stuff. So okay, cool. yeah. Um yeah, that's all the yarny things. My dog's barking, sorry about that. So we're moving on to life, reading, life, that kind of stuff. So if you're just here for the yarn, thanks for hanging out. Catch you later. Bye. Otherwise, bye. Otherwise, let's get going.
What are you opening your journal for? Books. Books, books, books. Let me books, open my books, notes. Books. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember where we left off last time. <laughs> I made a note. I'm so prepared. I think I remember. This is my book blanket bag. This is a Barley Pearls bag. Chris is best. She made it for me. We really are just Barley Pearl stands. Both Apparently, best. yeah. We really are. <clears throat> so, since I think a few of these I read last time, but I hadn't done the squares. But I'm just going to go through everything I have a square for. Um, I'm going to start at the bottom because that's just what's happening. <laughs> I finished One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. I'm going to open Goodreads also so I can talk to you about the books. This one's like a filler thriller. I like Geneva Rose. Um, her stuff is usually like a good quick read. They're always intriguing. Um, I'm going to tell you what I rated them though. Not want to read. Read. I see her a lot on TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> She's really funny. She calls her husband Drew. Past tense of draw. I know. I love it. I love it. Her TikTok is funny. I do follow mm -hmm. her. Um, One of Us is Dead, Geneva Rose. I gave it four stars. I liked it. This is an Arkansas Yarn Co. Yarn. I've never read anything by her, so I wonder if I'd like it. I thought she was romance. No, no, they're thriller. She does a different name for romance. She has a pen name yeah, for romance. Yeah, I think so. Um, I like it. I've read like three or four of hers, and they're, they're good. They're just a good thriller. Mm -hmm. um, my book blanket, in case anyone is newer or missed the last couple of episodes, I'm doing a granny square with fingering weight held double. For every book I read this year and then I'm going to join it together at the end of the year to have a blanket and I'm loving it it's giving me a lot of mojo um next one down I read The Cross and the Lynching Tree by James H. Cohn that was a tough read I gave it four stars it was very good I, I think I'll up that to five stars after reflecting on that it's a book that I ended up reading like twice because I just kept going back and re-listening and if you have religious trauma, <laughs> um, it's a good one. It's very, it's a very interesting perspective, even if you don't have religious trauma, if you're Christian, interested in Christian theology, um, very interesting parallels. I liked it a lot. It was very good. This is that, this is Magpie Fibers. Then I read All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. Liked that one. I gave it three stars um, just because it's like iffy for the first little bit. I don't know. I ended up liking it, but I wouldn't say I loved it. And yeah. I loved it. That's I read so it funny. too. And I was like, oh my God, I'm down. I mean, so I love it. And I don't even like Ashley Flowers. That's hilarious. Which is, I mean, I have my problems with Ashley Flowers. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I went in, we went in with different mindsets. Yeah. Like you went in thinking it was going to be amazing. And I, I went in thinking it was going to be shitty. Yeah. <laughs> I just heard really good things about it. Yeah. I just felt like it ended up just being like a mashup of a bunch of other true crime stories, which in perspective, that shouldn't negatively affect my rating because obviously she has a true crime podcast. She's surrounded by true crime all the time. Mm -hmm. She's going to draw influence from things. But the ending felt a little rushed and the, like the oh, way it unfolded. I loved it. And I loved how it ended. I loved everything anyway. about it. I it liked was crazy. it. I was just like, because I went in thinking I wasn't going to like it at all. That's funny. And then, and you were like, yeah, it was fine. And I was like, I loved it. That's so <laughs> funny. Um, then I read, that was all good people here. So Good They Can't Ignore You, a nonfiction book um, by Cal Newport. Listen to this one with my dad while we were on a road trip. Um, nonfiction, I do like black or gray. This one has some pink in it, but it was good. It was um, just like a motivational kind of deal. Quick read. I enjoyed it. I gave that three stars. Another thriller. My things are out of order. Or was that pink? No, I think that was gray. Anyway, When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Gave this one four stars. Loved it. It was really, really good. I try and save my five stars for like books that leave like a lasting impact that I would like highly recommend. And I'm like, everybody has to read this. That was phenomenal. So I don't give out a lot of five stars. Um, I don't know why I hold on to those so dearly. I kind of start at three for everything, and then it's like I'm going up or down. Three's like yeah, right three stars in... is still a good book. Yeah, three stars is a good book. Three stars is a run of the mill book. It's like enjoyed yeah. it, finished it, it was good. Two stars, finished it but didn't like it. One star, didn't finish. I don't give anything one star if I finished it. If it's good enough to finish, it gets a two. <laughs> um, that's my logic. And then four stars is like yeah, that like something about that stuck with me. Enjoyed it, would recommend it. Five stars is like life changing, impactful, needed to read it, good stuff kind of thing. That's my scale. This is four stars. 
um, Alyssa Cole. It was another, most, almost all the books I read in February were Black authors and a lot that I'm currently reading is Black authors. Um, <laughs> my brother's texting me just because I built a really incredible list from all you guys' suggestions and lots of thrillers, which I love. So this is a Cascade Heritage Prince. Then My Sister the Serial Killer. I liked that one. I gave it three stars because why did I give it three stars? I don't remember. Something about it I didn't love. It was really short and I think maybe it just felt kind of rushed. Yeah, I think it was, you said it was like two, three hours, something like that, right? Yeah, because I would listen to everything at one and a half to two times speed. So mm -hmm. it was a quick read. It was good. It just wasn't like great. It's one I've already forgotten. I don't know. I don't remember the character names. I don't remember. It was fiction. A ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It was good though. It was a three. I read it. Then. <laughs> it was a three. I read it. <laughs> Between the World and Me by... Tanahisi Coates, five stars. And Hands down. Tanahisi. I Tana heard a reference yeah. in um, Abbott Elementary. I was watching Abbott Elementary. Okay. And they said they called someone Tanahisi Coates. And I was like, oh my gosh, we said it right. Good. <laughs> good. Um, loved. Loved. I think I finished that last time, but I listened to that with my dad. Very good. Then I have another nonfiction square. That one might have been from the other time. I feel like I've seen that color before. My non-fictions, I read Between the World and Me, So Good They Can't Ignore You, and The Cross and the Lynching Tree. But I have four non-fiction squares. Is one of these... One of these, I think, was... No, I finished those last time because I did yeah. this little space. I feel like I've seen that square before, but maybe it was just in your picture. Yeah, it could have just been... I'll, I have an Instagram highlight saved. Every time mm -hmm. I finish the square, I put it in there. I am, um, as I'm finishing them, after I show them on the podcast, I'm like sorting them into piles on my desk in categories like mm -hmm. nonfiction, historical fiction, thriller, fantasy, um, and romance. I haven't read any romance yet, but so they're not going to be necessarily like in order. Like this square won't represent a specific book. This square is just going to represent a nonfiction book I read, and then I'll put them all together and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, that way, at the end of the year, I can see, like, my piles of how much I read of each. I think that'll be fun. I like that. And then my last little note on books. I also started keeping track. I get all my books through the library. Almost all. I've only purchased two books this year. I started keeping track of how much money I'm saving by using the library. So I went through and, like, found every book on Amazon and just went with the Amazon price. In January, I saved $99.74 on books based on using my library. And in February, I saved $208.98 on books. Those are some expensive books. Yeah. It's a lot of books. That's I read crazy. a lot. So, yeah, that's a fun number. I'm excited to keep track of that. So, that's all. Things I finished in February include How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. It was nonfiction, and um, it was basically touring different sites of like slavery and racism in the U.S. Yeah. There were, I think, eight different sites where he went and kind of just did like a tour and told you all about it mm. and ex the experience you have there, including like plantation, prison, um, New York City, and uh, like a slave island mm. in the, the, I want to say in the Caribbean, but I don't know actually where it was. Um, I didn't look up the geography yeah. of it. Amazing voice, amazing um narration it was just it was amazing um it was very fascinating stuff you just don't learn and then mm -hmm. also it's like a lot of stuff was in the present so it was kind of cool mm. and it's just interesting I don't yeah. know I've definitely um been to plantation tours before and a lot of people don't like that you know plantations exist in general um for like wedding venues and the beauty and the and you know like just in general, the architecture, and I definitely did appreciate the architecture of some of these, but when we did tours, it was all racism-based. Yeah. It was not, like, I can't think really, of a like, logical reason this. to get married at a plantation. No. That's ick. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. People do it all the time. That's gross. It's just because it's, just it's pretty and well-kept. I don't know. Yeah, there are other pretty places. Yeah. Um, gross. So, it was, it was definitely eye-opening as far as, like, different people's experience mm -hmm. there so even he went to like the Jefferson um plantation um and the history behind that I was just mm. very fascinated because my mom really loves Jefferson but like not not a great guy honestly I mean not not as bad as they come but 
not a great guy and you they glossed over that in history so very interesting um mm -hmm. and i've done a lot of those historical tours too like george washington's house and they show you like the slave quarters and all of this stuff and you're just kind of like Ugh. the actual fuck you know yeah um anyway good book <clears throat> um i don't remember if i rated it at all i don't really rate nonfiction unless like it literally i would go back and read it again which yeah. how to raise an anti-racist i will be getting that again later as i like raise my child Mm -hmm. um okay and then in february i also read me and white supremacy by layla e Saad, which it's not really <laughs> it was a challenge it was an anti-racism challenge back in i think 2021 it was an instagram challenge and it was like a month right during black history month i believe um where you had a prompt every day to like go through and i liked the book because it was not written by an american so it's not American specific, which, you know, we think about racism in the, in American context, really. Like, eh, that's all we know. Racism is a worldwide problem, for sure. But, but yeah, like, interesting yeah, perspective. You know, so, um, but she also went through the different, and she's a Muslim British woman that lives in like Qatar or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but she goes through like the different facets of it. Like, you know, for me being like not white, having white privilege she puts that contextually like for people who are white passing and who are not fully white or mm -hmm. and just the privileges you get and then how you contextualize that in your mind and it's it was really good I did find myself being called out quite a bit and it was kind of like I you know you get uncomfortable and you're supposed to be yeah that's, that's the whole the thing mm -hmm. so um yeah I really like that I did I tracked my reading last month. There's only five days I didn't read. So nice. I was really proud of myself for that. And I read eight books in February. And then in March, I've only read two so far. Me too. <laughs> but I read All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers, and I loved it. I thought it was really good. And I did, in the beginning, I understood. I was like, she's just fucking with the, the John Bonet Ramsey case. Yeah. She's writing the fantasy of it, you know? The one that yeah. everybody wanted to be true. And I was like, and then she's just going to solve it and that's going to be it. But like, she went way deeper than that and I liked it a lot. And then I started, I started three books I haven't finished. I started The Happiest Baby on the Block by Dr. Harvey Karp. I'm going to be reading a lot of parenting books. Mm -hmm. I apologize for nothing because I am freaking out. Um, and I started The Wonder Weeks by Franz X. Pluge and uh, Hedy Van Der Ritt. Um, I think that those are both very like Eastern European names. Um, my sister actually like lived by the Wonder Weeks and her children are like very smart. They're very undisciplined. So I'm not gonna like be my sister, but the the way she was so in awe of like every moment when they were like babies, you know, and her patience, I'm like, I feel like this will help me. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So the Wonder Weeks is about like the mental leaps infants go through and why they cry. And so is the happiest baby on the block, like the whole why they cry thing and trying to like, you know, conceptualize it so that it's not as jarring for you. <laughs> yeah. So those are fun. Um, I finished uh, B is for Burglar by Sue Grafton, which is the second in the alphabet murder oh, case yeah. thing. I really like it. I don't know if you'll like it, but I, it's because <sighs> the writing's not great, but it's a good murder story every time. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not deep. It's not intelligent. It's very, and it's short, you know, mm -hmm. but like, it's a good murder story every time. Okay. Like the plot is good. It's fascinating. And it's old. This Looks one was funny. written in 1985. Wow. And so I really enjoyed it. B is for broker. Good. I'm going to get the C one next. C is for corpse, I believe. Love it. <laughs> um, and then I started Deja Dead by Kathy Rikes. Have, do you know who that is? Mm -mm. It's the lady who wrote Bones. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so the main character of this book is Temperance Brennan. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I cool. really, really enjoy it. I don't think you're going to like that one. Um, it's so graphic. Oh, yeah. Very, very graphic descriptions of violence and bodies. And nah, yeah, dude. that's not for you. But it is, it is bones. And that's except fun. for, you know, it's set in Canada and she's a lot older. Mm. So like she has a daughter when she starts and she's divorced. And um, yeah, and her daughter's like in her 20s. So it's like, yeah, it's weird. And it's set in Canada. But like, so I'm, I'm very fascinated. I think it's a really good story so far, but um, I wanted to say, yeah, you're gonna love it. But then I was like listening to some of the descriptions and I was like, 
she won't like that. She won't like that at all. That's funny. She won't like that a lit, not even a little bit. Cause I was like, ooh. Yeah, the graphic <laughs> stuff just ain't it for me. No, not yeah. Not into it. I completely understand that too. So, uh, cause I was getting icked for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's all I read. That's all. We both read a shit ton. Like, that's all. <laughs> that's all I, read. I only read 12 books in February. That's it. I only read eight. <laughs> that's not that many. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. My goal is to read nine a month because that'll give me 108 squares, which is a good size for my blanket. Mm -hmm. um, but I only read eight in January. So my goal is to read 10 in February and then I read 12. So now I'm ahead. Things You're are good. good. Everything's good. I've read two so far this month. And then I started an audio today and I started a Kindle book yesterday. Yeah, most so. of mine were audio except for um, one of my anti-racism books and um, all of the parenting books. They don't do audio. So. Really? Yeah. Um, I try and read half and half, like one Kindle book and one audio book per week is typically my goal. I do a lot of reading at work contracts and stuff and some of them are hundreds of pages long and I literally will be reading it while I'm listening to a book but That's I cannot funny. do both reading and then when I get home I don't want to look at anything I like to read to end my night um like when I'm ready to go to bed I like to turn off the lights and like put my phone away and then read it helps me fall asleep and sleep better but I don't do it every night mm -hmm. but I try not mm -hmm. for me because once I get in the bed I'm gonna <laughs> fall asleep <laughs> yeah I'm tired now Fair enough, um, fair enough. What about life stuff? What's going on? You're going on a road trip. to Dallas. Yeah. yeah, I have a work trip in Dallas. Um, leaving tomorrow, going to be gone for a few days. So I'm excited about that. I'm staying with one of my aunts, my great aunts, and i um, going to eat good food and learn lots of good stuff. And I'm going with my dad, so he's driving and paying for everything. <laughs> and, well, it's a business trip, so the business is paying for everything. But um, I'm excited. We found an Ethiopian restaurant we're going to have mm. for dinner tomorrow night. Oh, which like I love Ethiopian. And the nearest to us is in Memphis. So I don't get it super often. I go to Memphis a few times a year usually. <clears throat> but I can really only get it in Memphis or Dallas. But I go to both of those places a couple times a year. So excited about that. I'm sure we'll have barbecue as one of the catered meals. And probably Mexican as one of the catered meals. And my aunt's favorite restaurant is Mexican Place. So I'm sure we'll go with her there. And then I'm trying, I'm going to try and convince my dad to go to Hot Pot as our last dinner because I want it. Um, that or Korean barbecue. One of those two. It's just so rude. They're both so it's good. It's just so rude. And there are two in Dallas not far from our conference center that we could grab dinner um, at. And so I'm excited. Um, yeah, so that's like my next week. I'm hoping I get knitting done. But I know a lot of the conference time is going to be like hands-on workshops. So, I don't know how much I'll get done there. You'll always have time for stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's fun. Um, mm -hmm. Life stuff for me has been mostly <clears throat> You're family, cooking a baby. Cooking a baby. Um, my mom went on a business trip, and um, we have, like, work training stuff still happening. So, that's really fun. Mm -hmm. I have stuff arriving every day and just piling it in my house. Yep. And it's freaking me out. And yeah, it's just real crazy. Baby stuff. In it's, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stuff that's taking up a lot of room and I'm like really like weirded out. I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. And um, yeah, it's been pretty boring. I read, I knit, I sleep. Sleep, <laughs> sleep, sleep. So much sleep. Yep, as much of that as I can get yeah. these days. I spent a ton of time with my nieces and nephews this last month, which has been really fun. Um, they live about an hour away from me, so not every month works out where I can see them a bunch, but um, I kept each of them, My the older two, I have an 11-year-old, 6-year-old, and a 1-year-old uh, niece or nephew, and kept each of the older ones for a weekend on their own in February, and then I kept them together one weekend. Um, so it was like all of my weekends and I ended up at their house for the Super Bowl and I was up there a couple of days ago for something and then I was up there this morning because they had a like breakfast thing at their school that they got to invite a buddy to to take them to the book fair. That's so Wesley's cute! Buddy. So I drove down there and had a donut and took him to the book fair and it was really fun but I had to be there at 7 30 in the morning so I had to wake up early um but it was fine. So that was fun and I'm gonna see them again in a couple days. It's just that always fills my heart. I love my niece and nephew. Love them a lot. 
Love all my family. They're real cute. Mm -hmm. um, I always see my nieces and nephews constantly. One of our friends from California moved uh, to Georgia and she took a week to drive from California to Georgia because she had her nine-year-old son, her mother, her husband, and her 14-year-old little dog, I think. 12, 14 years old. Gracious. Um, and so they took a really long time to drive, but they stopped in Arkansas to come see us today. They were like, you're only like an hour away. Like we can come see you. And so we had breakfast at the patio cafe and talked for like several hours. It was crazy. And it was just really good to see them. And they were just so sweet. Mm -hmm. And I saw my sister and her kids and they were so funny. And we went to Target and walked around. It was great. Um, and Mamie had just come off having her surgery. My niece had her um, tonsils removed, her adenoids removed, and um, her sinuses cauterized. Crazy. Mm -hmm. She's four. So <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And she was having a little allergic reaction to the anesthesia, which is common for kids. But um, man, that kid, she's wild because she was jumping around next mm -hmm. day. Um, we love That's her. Good. We love her. She's crazy. Um, so I got to hang out with them. And then yesterday, my sister, my other sister came over with her two kids and I was like, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. She came over to clean my litter box because I mm -hmm. can't clean that because pregnant. And, um, they were just driving me insane. One of them had, what is it called? Adenosis. It's adenovirus, something like that. Yeah. And I was like, why are you is. bringing them here? Like, it's just like a, like a respiratory thing and I'm just like and then they were just crazy and I was like I can't and she's so patient mm. I need some of that patience she does not care she's like she doesn't I don't know if she doesn't hear it or what but I'm like your kids are obnoxious that's funny <laughs> everybody says stop saying that because I'm gonna have the most obnoxious child in the world but I can't help it it is what it is it is what it is children are annoying and I think it's okay to tell them that <laughs> I think it humbles them and keeps them grounded because <laughs> every child is a little annoying, you know? They're wonderful, amazing, smart, sweet little babies, and I love them, but sometimes even just the child laughing, it's very annoying. <laughs> so everyone telling me, you're going to be such a great mom. Maybe not. Let's, let's think about it. We'll see. Uh, no. Well, yeah, we'll see. That's what I tell everyone. We'll see. We'll That's see how funny. that goes. No, I don't know. No. I think it's normal for people to be annoyed by children. <laughs> You're like, no. Yeah. Oh, man. Strangers' children I'm annoyed by. The ones I'm related to, I love them. They're cute. <laughs> love them. They're cute and annoying. Um, But that's it for me. I don't have anything else going on. Nothing Just crazy. Just crying baby. Yeah. I've got double the bones of a normal person right now. Ew. Yeah. I like that. I've got like an extra couple hundred bones. How many bones does a person have? Like 200, right? Is it? I don't remember. It's something I know crazy. I learned it in school. If it's not 200, I'm really what if it's like 50? Science was no. not my, my strong suit. I think it's over 100. Science is not it. Somebody tell me in the comments. I feel like it's 200. Google it. I don't know. How wrong am I? I want to know in the comments. Yeah. I don't want to Google it. How many bones do you think you have? <laughs> How many bones do you feel like you have? Do you, you count have? every individual tooth? I think so. Very individual. Yeah, yeah, 200. 200 bones. I feel that like it's like good. 230 or something like that. Um, I literally was so bad at science. I had to take chemistry twice. Um, <laughs> but I was in honors, everything else. So that's kind of funny. I like to, when I start Googling things, I like to just type in a couple of words and see what pops up. Yeah, what is it? Game. Like, how many people I are Googling that? How many? And it said, how many Tuskegee Airmen are still alive? You already <laughs> I've I've asked that question. <laughs> How many ounces in a gallon? How many weeks in a year? That's what it's asking. Okay, how many bones are in the human body? 206. Oh, I was you a little off. right. Oh, well, that's close. I knew it was over 200, 200, but I was like 230. That sounds right. Not 230. No, 206. That, For the average have... bone haver. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, gosh. Science with Kristen and Maddie. Don't trust us. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. I think that's all we've got for you, folks. That's it. It's nighttime. Yep. So y'all have a good night. Bye. Bye. Oh, shit. What? The Daisy Blanket. Talk about it in. <laughs> throw it in sooner. You can throw it in before the lights stuff. Okay. I mean, is this good? I guess if we have to be in frame. <laughs> no, I'm kidding.
Okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's wonderful. Remember that hate comment we got about touching our hair too much? Mm -hmm. I think about that every time we film. I, I, I don't think about it every time until I am editing and then I see ourselves and I'm like, shit, we do touch our hair all the time. It wasn't really a hate comment. She's just pointing it out. It's hateful. Autistic little if self. <laughs> if it's not nice, then it's a hate comment. I'm, uh, not gonna... <laughs> I'm kidding. If I hated it. Yeah, I hated it. <laughs> well, um, I hated it. Okay. That's funny.